Hi everybody, I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a very sort of special alternate version of a confidence interval for one sample proportions. Now, this is a special procedure that basically allows us to get around condition three, if condition three, that one about having at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures actually is not met by our data set. So we'll talk a little bit about this and then take a look at one example of building one of these. So this is what is called the plus four confidence interval for one sample proportions. So if we think back to what we've been discussing, condition three of a one sample proportion confidence interval states that we must have at least 10 observed successes and at least 10 observed failures. And so far in our examples, that's never been an issue. But sometimes this can be sort of difficult to achieve either due to the fact that you're studying a very rare event or you have limited access to your data. Now, what I mean by that is that it doesn't necessarily sound like 10 observed successes and 10 observed failures is something that's very challenging to achieve, but consider something like you're studying a very rare event. Imagine you wanna study like the chance that you get struck by lightning if you're out in a open field during a thunderstorm. So if you imagine if you, you know, you find some, uh, you know, poor hapless intern to go and do this study for you and you send them out into a field during a thunderstorm, most likely they're not going to be struck by lightning. So you'd have one failure and no successes. Then during the next thunderstorm, you'd send them out again. They wouldn't get struck by lightning. You'd have zero successes, two failures. You'd send them out into that field hundreds of times. And then maybe finally, just once they finally get struck by lightning. And that would be one success. Now you just have to wait for that to happen nine more times before you'd have your 10 observed successes and your 10 observed failures. Obviously that could take you thousands of thousands of times to do that because it's a very rare event. So that means that actually building our standard confidence interval might be very, very challenging. This can also happen in less extreme situations where you just simply don't have access to a large amount of data. You might be studying something where it's difficult to collect not just successes or failures, but just difficult to collect data in general, and you might not have enough to get 10 successes and 10 failures. So we need sort of an alternate way of doing this. So it turns out there is an alternate confidence interval that can be built if that condition three fails. If condition three is passed, there's no reason to do this. But if condition three fails, we do have an alternate approach. This interval is called the plus four confidence interval for one sample proportions. And the way this interval is constructed is that you simply add two additional successes and two additional failures to your original data. Notice that by adding two successes and two failures, you're adding four extra data points to your sample. And that's where the name plus four confidence interval comes from. So you might ask yourself, why is it two additional successes and two additional failures? Why is that sort of magically what works? Well, it's actually sort of a, an interesting idea. This is a result that is relatively new to statistics. And by relatively new, we mean about in the last about 40 or 50 years. And this result was actually discovered when statisticians started to actually make use of computers. And what they did is they ran thousands and thousands of simulations, basically trying to figure out what was the best way to modify a confidence interval to actually achieve the confidence that was sort of stated in the interval. And it turned out that by trying many, many different simulations and many, many different combinations, this one of adding two successes and two failures actually turned out to be the best result. Now, saying much more about why that's really the case is sort of beyond the scope of our class. Um, it's a sort of very calculus and to be honest, a very sort of deep result about why this one actually works the best. But it's very interesting to note that it was something that was really only discoverable through the use of technology. So plus four confidence interval is an interesting idea here. Now, is there are there any conditions for a plus four confidence interval? Well, of course, you always have conditions one and two. You still have to have good data, random and representative sample size less than 5% of your population size. But there is a third condition, right, that takes the place of our standard at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. The necessary condition uh, for the alternate construction is that your original data set has at least 10 data points. So you, 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 it turns out that even this plus four confidence interval simply cannot fix if you just have a tiny amount of data. So you need at least 10 data points in your original data set before you add these extra four for this to actually work. 
The same formula in terms of that p hat plus or minus z star square root p hat one minus p hat over n is used. So the only difference here is that you use that modified data set where you add two additional successes and two additional failures. So basically this plus four confidence interval gives us a way of getting around condition three if it's not met in this one particular situation. Let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at an example of this. So. Let's suppose that you are a researcher studying the sort of hunting success rate for lions. So you're basically studying when lions go out to hunt, how often, what percentage of the time are they actually successful in that hunt? So what you do is you observe 35 randomly selected lion hunts. Um, we're gonna assume that there were many to choose from. And you find that during six of those 35, they end successfully. So we're gonna use the data to build a 90% confidence interval for the success rate of lion hunts. Okay, so let's imagine, I mean, we just talked about this plus four confidence interval, so it's probably reasonable that that's the one we're gonna use, but let's imagine we just go down our normal route to begin with. So let's imagine that we're going to do our one sample proportion confidence interval, which makes sense because what are we trying to do? We're trying to come up with a confidence interval for the success rate or the successful percentage of these hunts. So let's go to our conditions. So for the conditions here, the first one is that our data needs to be random and representative. And that is definitely stated, so we're all good there. The second one is that our sample size needs to be less than 5% of our population size. And that is assumed there. Let's move that over just a little bit. Uh, it said it was assumed there were many to choose from so we're all good with that and then condition three so this would be the one about the successes and failures well we saw that we had six of them uh ended successfully so s was equal to six and unfortunately you can see that that is not greater than or equal to 10. the failures we would be fine on right the, since there were 35 hunts and six were successful there were 29 failures and that would be greater than equal to 10. But this first condition right here for condition three, that first part of it, the successes being at least 10, well, unfortunately we didn't have that so we were unable to do that, make this condition. So we would see here that normally we'd be stuck. We wouldn't be able to build this one sample proportion confidence interval. Now, as we discussed, right, in real life, I guess you could have a couple options. You could continue to study these, these lion hunts and hopefully see enough successful ones that eventually you would have 10 successes and 10 failures. But again, that might be something that's relatively difficult to do, right? Observing wild animals and observing their hunts and things like that, that might take a lot of time, effort, right? So maybe it's not feasible to get a larger data set. So instead, we'll go ahead and build our plus four confidence interval. So we'll do our plus four one sample proportion confidence interval. So to do this plus four, uh, one sample confidence interval, well, we've got some conditions we still need to check. One and two have already been checked. And condition three, well, we just simply need to make sure that we have at least 10 data points. Well, our n here was 35, which is greater than or equal to 10, so we're all good. So the conditions for doing a plus four confidence interval are met. So let's go ahead and move to our construction. To do the construction, we need to modify our data. So our successes, which were six, we're going to add two to them. So now we're gonna imagine we have eight successes. And our failures, where we had 29, we're going to add two to that and imagine that we had 31. And notice that that means that our sample size, which was originally 35, is now gonna be 39 because we added two to the successes, added two to the failures, that adds four to our sample size. So this will be the data that we'll be using. So now we have our same formula, p hat plus or minus z star square root p hat one minus p hat over n. So there are three things we need to know here. First, we need to know our sample proportion. We are going to use this modified data. So we had eight successes out of 39 instances. So eight divided by 39. Let's go ahead and put that in. Eight divided by 39. Looks like we should get 0.205. 
So about 20 and a half percent there. Our sample size was 39 and our Z star, well, we can look that up on table C. We have our Z star and we'll have to intersect that with our confidence level, which was supposed to be 90% in this case. So we will get a slightly different Z star than the previous examples we've been doing because our confidence level is only going to be 90% here. So let's go ahead and take a look, right? If we sort of zoom out, uh, we're going to be using 90% confidence right there. And of course, Z star is at the bottom right there. So the intersection there is going to be 1.645. So our Z star, 1.645. So we found 1.645 and we'll record that right there. Okay, let's throw everything in there then. 0 0.205 plus or minus 1.645 square root. 0 0.205, 1 minus 0 0.205, and then divided by that 39. And again, remember, everything that is in this formula is based on this modified data. So our sample proportion comes from the modified successes over the modified sample size, and this N down here references the modified sample size now. So let's go ahead and get that margin of error first, so 1.645 times the square root 0 0.205 times 1 minus 0 0.205 and then divided by 39. And it looks like we should have a margin of error of plus or minus 0.106. Then we can go ahead and build our interval. So we can take our subtraction there, 0 0.205 minus 0 0.106. So we get 0 0.099 and then our addition Looks like we get 0.311. So we would say that we are 90% confident that between 9.9% and 31.1% of lion hunts end in success. So even though we were unable to satisfy that third condition with having enough successes and enough failures, we use this modified approach, this plus four confidence interval, to still build an interval that we can trust. 90% confident in this case, that between a little under 10%, all the way up to about 31% of these lion hunts will end in an actual successful hunt. In our next video, we'll be changing gears and moving away from one sample proportion procedures and talking about how to do this with two samples of categorical data.